Imagine there's no heaven It's easy if you try No hell below us Above us only sky Imagine all the people Living for the day Hi, I'm Cliff Hansen, and I'm here m with Miguel Gravel, and we're on um, what I think is our 10th uh, episode of the Just Us podcast. Yep. Sounds right. We, hey, everybody. Yeah, we, we've uh, got an incredibly long platform that I haven't even started to get put together. That'll be up at some point, and we've recorded a few that haven't been posted, so I don't know what number we are actually we've recorded but uh we're actually in the new phase here uh mm -hmm. we're, we're feeling like if you've noticed a different vibe here we're pushing quality up we've added video and um one of the reasons for that is we have candidates now we have people actually running and before you know that, that was we're organizing we're trying to figure out what to do and now we're actually have moved into the action phase and so I'm really excited about this next step because now we're going to be looking more at what is actually being accomplished mm -hmm. so um, yeah so we are um, going to look at a few new candidates today and I'm really excited about that there are a whole bunch of new candidates announced and we're going to look at the first two of them today and um, uh, I had a lot of a lot of other things I just kind of wanted to banter about. Um, there was uh, I, th I think we'll probably put most of them off till uh, in the future. But one one of the things I wanted to discuss that I'll I'll, I'll put off till I've done a little more research is um, apparently my school's water was poisonous. Yeah. my entire life <laughs> and no one bothered telling me <laughs> and so I'm I'm I'd say dying to know <laughs> but uh, <laughs> sure. the uh, when, when I say you know we need to focus on our infrastructure that's exactly what I'm talking about um, yeah I was just my sister made some sort of random comment about the the water at the school and you know about the problems because my nephew's going there and it's like what problems and she's like the superfund site wait it's a superfund site and she, and she just kind of got this look like oh you haven't heard she's like yeah we've been poisoned our entire life <laughs> like what and uh, yeah so like i i I literally barely know more than you know what I'm said already like apparently there's like railroad tracks with like grain styles silos across from the school and okay. they think that there was some sort of either pesticide or barrels of chemicals or something that had been stored there and this was banned in 1985 which um I think I went to start going to school in 85 or 86. I'd have to <laughs> figure that math out there. Um, so it could have been there for decades, which would have been better because then it'd be more diluted. Um, but it could have been pretty fresh too. And right. this went directly into the groundwater and is some sort of chemical. And I'm, I'm the names are long and scientific. Um, so I'm, I'm going to have to do a little more research there, but um, basically cause liver damage and cancer. And going to that school for, um, you know, from kindergarten until <laughs> senior year, um, I definitely got a lot of that. And so I'm, I'm wanting to learn a little more, but um, yeah, feeling, yeah, feeling for the Flint people a little <laughs> more than ever at this point. I well, hope you guys get your class action lawsuit. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 it worries me that like 
I never even heard about it. Like, a, my um, sister and mom live near the school, and they say they went to a bunch of, um, like, town hall meetings about it. Okay. But apparently nobody thought of telling anyone else. And uh, I, I have a friend that graduated with me that um, he still lives in the city but wasn't near the school, and he'd never heard of this. So... Uh, yeah, it seems they didn't do a very good job of telling anyone or, <laughs> you know, like, it just, even if there's not clear answers yet, I'd like to know and I'd like to know what to watch out for. And, you know, like, if I get sick or it was something, I'd like to be able to tell the doctor, like, okay, yeah, I was apparently yeah. absorbing this chemical that's now banned for 16 years. Yeah. <laughs> so, You're right to know. <laughs> yeah. So... This is why Justice Democrats like to focus on infrastructure, because we, ours is a mess. <laughs> Which is a huge part of what one of our candidates we're going to talk about today cares about, is all that infrastructure support. Yeah, we, we have lots of good people. Um, I'm really excited. We're going to look at two, and um, the two that are picked are both, uh, they have an educational background. And so we're going to focus on them today and then probably next Friday or somewhere around there, we'll look at the rest of them. But uh, if you go to Brand New Congress, um, if you go to Justice Democrats or Justice Democrats podcast.wordpress.com, you can learn about all of these people. I'm uh, during lunch break trying to fill in <laughs> as much as I can on the site. Um, oh, oh yeah, one more thing before we move along. Um, on justicedemocrats.wordpress.com, I listed a bunch of jobs that are available. Uh, they're from the Brand New Congress website. I don't have the list readily handy, but there were quite a few there. They seem to pay fairly well. And some of them appear to be remote. Trust me, I will be applying for some of them because it would be wonderful to do this full time. We are not supported by George Soros. <laughs> and we are, uh, everything we do is a labor of love. And I would love to do what I'm doing now and, or, you know, something similar to help out. So, um, I'm not going to tell you which one to, don't want to bias you guys. Uh, please run. You know, if, if you are someone that thinks you could be a candidate, sign your name up. If you know someone, sign their name up and we'll get in touch. If you can volunteer, volunteer. If you are able to uh, apply for one of those jobs, do that. There are so many ways you can help out. Even just sharing links to things going on, um, that would be just so helpful just getting the word out because we're people are starting to notice us and mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're actually getting some uh, flame on um, YouTube there are some videos there that um, they don't like us in some ways and there was one that was um, against Cory Bush and I, I want to go back and watch the entire video so I can address some of them but the the uh, so so I I'm I only saw a little bit. I was in a rush, so maybe some of what I'm about to say isn't um, a complete point, or, uh, a, a partial point of view. And maybe if I saw the full video, I might have a different uh, thing. But they were critical, and they called it "Justice Democrats' first candidate is a fail" uh, because she's a single mom. Uh, and that's weak. it's not just weak. It's 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 going to connect with. You, you know there's more than one single mom out there, right? You know it's not a scarlet letter on your forehead. Um, nope. Being a single mom means a certain set of experiences and values. And I have found that anecdotally, the single moms are some pretty tough people. Yep. And she is going to connect quite well with other single moms. And so just to dismiss that out of hand, um, that's a fail on their part. I think, I think she's going to do incredibly well 
and that's not going to be a weakness. That's going to be a strength. And so that, that's that's just you. If you're going to argue, you can do better than that. <laughs> so um, yeah, we're, we've got a handful of people we're going to talk about here, and um, Miguel's going to take the lead. And can you start with Michael? Sure, we'll do. Unless you had a preference. Oh, no preference. Um, so Michael Hepburn is running for Florida's 27th district uh, for the U.S. House of Representatives. So he's basically an African-American gentleman who identifies more as like a Caribbean-American. He grew up in a Caribbean, Miami sort of neighborhood. And um, he had his father die at a young age and he had a strong single mom that helped raise him and he had some really great teachers that were important to him in life that helped him take such a value in education. Um, some of the things that are really impressive about um, our future Representative Hepburn are that... And now, wait, what's he running for again? Um, Florida's 27th District House of Representatives. Yeah. So I forgot to write. No, I, I did write that. It's on the screen. So for, for the for the U.S. Congress, everyone gets like he he for Washington D.C. but representing the twenty seventh district, um, and you know he's just like a real leader, like salt of the earth. He is somebody who uh, like is active in the community where he's part of his neighborhood. He's like the CEO of his neighborhood um, association. He's someone who is a youth mentor. He's somebody who volunteers with the police to help out and hold the police accountable. And that's fantastic, you know? And he basically tutors um, fourth graders all the way up to 11th graders on Saturdays, just helping them out with school. And that's just fantastic. And to top it off, he's not just such a good human rights activist, but he cares about our environment. He supports our parks. He's an advocate who was able to, while serving on the Miami Park and Recreation Advisory Board, he was able to get a city ordinance for Miami passed that banned styrofoam Ooh. Um, in, in the parks, in city parks. And I was just at an exhibit yesterday at my local um, science museum, that, and I was listening to an exhibit talk about how styrofoam takes one million years yeah. to biodegrade. For, for context, something like um, a biodegradable uh, spudware potato starch spoon or something takes like uh, four weeks. <laughs> well, if you something like a plastic bag takes, you know, 300 years. If but you've styrofoam, eaten a million years. fish, you've eaten plastic. And, yeah, you know, like it just it breaks down in these tiny little bits. You know, like that's why they're calling our epoch the uh, Anthropocene is like we've actually... Physically changed things, and like it, it affects us. I I don't want to eat styrofoam. Yeah. So okay, I, I didn't know that about him. That it it, it seems like such a, a a small thing, but like that is going to have a huge impact for the better for humans. <laughs> yeah, and this is somebody who is really part of their community. Somebody who comes from that district probably wants somebody who's really part of the community. I couldn't think of a better person, a better exemplifier of what taking the burden of when you are a resident of somewhere, you have the rights that come with your residency and you have the duties that come with your residency. And that's something I teach. I teach civics every day as a history teacher. And what I tell kids is you have rights and have responsibilities. If you want to, if you want to hope that you hold on to those rights, you have responsibilities that mm -hmm to your community that make sure you uphold those rights. Um, but let me just get into some of his platforms. So um, so Michael Hepburn, his name again, um, I'm just going to read it verbatim what his succinct platform statement is. He says, I will be a champion for public education. Ah, Betsy DeVos, take that. <laughs> Stand for fair and equal justice. Uh, you know? Our uh, attorney general needs to uh, have a look at that. He just recently threw out some papers that he didn't even read um, that had to deal with um, 
um, like police brutality. Just like here's some sur- here's some studies that were compiled into the Obama administration. He literally said something in a quote that I'm paraphrasing. It said, uh, a lot of it was anecdotal and it didn't seem really based in science. So um, I just didn't read the papers. This coming from an administration that I thought they didn't care about science. So this is news to me. But <laughs> <laughs> I digress. Um, Michael says, and I'm an advocate for the expansion of Social Security, Medicare, and comprehensive health care for all, since it should be a right not a privilege. South Florida desperately needs a 21st century economy built on the foundation of a living wage. Amen to that. Fight for 15 people, get excited. <laughs> Affordable housing and financial investments in rebuilding our infrastructure, which we talked about the grade that we got on infrastructure. Well, in <laughs> Florida too. I mean, it. the stakes, I mean, there, there's no altitude there. And the idea of the thing about Venice Mm -hmm. is it's a beautiful, historic, cultured um, city that people are lining up to spend their money on restoring and it's got major thriving economy. The thing about Florida <laughs> is um, it's in many ways often considered one of our worst states and that's um, you know certainly I'm not talking about the, the people per se although many of them certainly but um, you know it, it's a state that is um, full of con- corruption it's it's got uh it's jeb bush ran it (laughs) you know and so it's it's not had any real attention given to improving it and um as climate change affects it no one's gonna be in a hurry to build up seawalls and you know like they're gonna be spending that money in new york but um there's this kind of like they're going to ignore the people there. And mm-hmm. so I love the idea of putting forward someone that's actually a human being <laughs> that cares about the place and would like to not see it competing with Arizona for the bottom of our states and would actually like to say, hey, you know, we've got some heart. We can make this work here. Mm-hmm. I, I might have shown some of my biases. <laughs> oh, hey, hey, they're, they're, they're good biases. Not all biases is too bad. <laughs> bias is our worldview, and you have a solid. I've never view. been to Florida, so, but I, I am not in a hurry. But uh, get Hepburn in there, and I, <laughs> the, the odds of me going have suddenly increased from zero <laughs> to quite likely. So, <laughs> right. So if, if you're in Florida's twenty seventh district, if you don't even know. Just go to brand new Congress and, you know, type in your address, find that out. You know, it's easy to just basically, you can go to Google and say, what is my congressional district? And, you know, because of the search enabled stuff on computers, they'll know where you are and they'll just tell you. So Florida's 27th, Michael Hepburn for U.S. Congress. Let's do it, guys. Awesome. Santa Pipe Dream. It's going to happen. Yeah. Let me tell you about Anthony Clark. Um, oh, actually, wait one second here. We'll do uh, so. <laughs> I um, let's let Michael Hepburn tell you about himself uh, very quickly. And Miguel, I apologize, you're not going to be able to hear the audio for this. No worries, I'll catch it on the episode when it's live. All right. Thank you so much, Rob. Um, just want to say hello to everyone out there on this live stream. This is definitely an honor to be here talking to you tonight. Uh, my name is Michael A. Hepburn, and I am running to become the next congressman for the 27th Congressional District right here in Florida. Um, this district ranges from Miami Beach, which a lot of you probably know of, to Coconut Grove and Coral Gables, all the way down south to our Cutler Bay. But the best part about this district is we are diverse as people, but we also have very diverse as far as with different living arrangements, as well as mindsets, right? Because the thing that is important about tonight is this. After the presidential election, 
man, my family, my friends, and my neighbors started having some serious conversations about our country. We started talking about how our communities weren't as inclusive as we thought they should be. We started talking about how we still face some of the same barriers that I was actually dealing with when I was a kid in middle school or elementary school. But we also talked about how we simply did not need more millionaires or career politicians running to represent us. So I know tonight you're probably asking, well, Mike, if that's the case, then what do you need? Good question. We need exactly what's taking place tonight. We need a movement across the nation that includes working class and middle class people all across the country running for office and winning in order to influence the public policy that affects us all. No, it's not easy. No, it's not something that's been done before. But we together is going to make that change. Tonight is a special night because you are a part of something that has never been done and something that I know will be truly impactful in my district as well as all the others. So I am just a what, senior academic advisor at a school of business here in Miami, Florida, at the University of Miami, actually, who used to work in retail management in the national or sports entertainment with the National Football Group, right? But the thing that I love the most about living here and growing up here and being a Miami native is all of the people that poured life into my dreams and my goals. So one of the best things that I do every day outside of work is serve the community that has served me for so long. So I volunteer as a citizen on patrol with our police department here in Miami. I co-founded our neighborhood association here in Adapata in order for us to have voices as residents so we can advocate for the things that we believe in, right? I volunteer and serve as a youth mentor so we can pour life into the folks coming after me so they can be inspired and believe in their dreams and their goals. You know, I sit on the park and recreation board because it's important for us to have great parks and go outside and have healthy lives and better wellness opportunities. Something that I definitely wasn't really afforded when I was growing up. We actually played in the street. So one of the things I'm advocating for now is for folks to actually play in their park. And that's important. But the best part about running for office in a sense and going through what is getting ready to happen from this point forward is that I am coming with a team of people that are inspired, impactful, and difference makers just like me across this nation that is truly going to stand up for the things that you believe in. And when I say the things that you believe in, I'm talking about like standing up for solutions to climate change, right? For someone that lives here in Miami, I definitely know and understand that climate change is real. We literally have water coming up underneath us, let alone the, the oceans that's coming in from the east and the west, taking away cities that will not maybe be here in 20 or 30 years unless we stand up to preserve our environment. But it's just not tied to that, right? Because we're dealing with stronger hurricanes and, and um, more higher temperatures that's affecting all of us here in Miami, Florida, the Sunshine State. But it also affects other stuff like affordable housing. You know, how important is that? Where I work every day, full-time job, I actually went to college too, right? But still struggle to find affordable places in our city to live. And that happens to me, so you can imagine what's happening to my neighbors and the other constituents in our district. And that is important for us to have a plan to fight against, but to also be able to invest financially in building infrastructure and other mass transit improvements that can help us with climate change, and that help us prepare with um, more solutions and better initiatives for affordable housing. But tied to that, as much as you may find a place for someone to live or preserve our environment, if we're not having people across this nation make decent pay, if here in Florida, if the minimum wage was $7.25, as in that's what it's right now for federal government, or even the $8.10 that we currently have as our minimum wage, if that is what we feel is the best we can do, then we have a problem. That's why I am standing up for fighting for a living wage across this nation so people can have economic prosperity all across the U.S in order for them to afford great places to live, to invest in their parts, to stand up and fight for things that will stop some of the burdens that's coming because of climate change, right? All of this is interconnected. If we are not investing in our infrastructure, if we're not preserving our environment, if we're not fighting for and investing in affordable housing and other components that can truly help us, then what are we doing? What is your government up to? But that is going to change because of this movement. We are bringing a new perspective to what government can be. It is time for your voice to be at the table of your government. 
And myself, as well as everyone that you're hearing from tonight, is going to be a part of that mission, a part of that, that charge forward to make a better tomorrow for all of us. So, as you know, we can't do it by ourselves. And as I continue to walk every precinct in this district, spread in our message about how we can rebuild our economy and repair our communities and reform these institutions, we are coming together as one, as a brand new Congress, pushing a new perspective towards what we can do together. All right, we're back. So that was Michael. Okay, so have you ever seen those people like they're in a car and they're just rocking to some music and like, but their windows are rolled up, so you just look hilarious? That's probably the view yeah. that Miguel has just had because he's had to sit patiently here. As I'm not able to hear the audio either, but at least I had the video. <laughs> he's just staring at my bald head <laughs> <laughs> this entire time. Um. All right, the uh, all right. So next up, we have uh, Anthony Clark, and uh, yep, m much like Michael, like the, just, just this guy just seems like someone I know. Like he just has a sort of like vibe to him, like just a feels. He's my type of people, so uh, let's hear it. Well, so running for. The U.S. Congress for the Illinois Seventh District is Anthony Clark, and um, he's a guy who comes from working class beginnings. Um, neither of his parents went to college. Um, he grew up learning the value of hard work um, in Oak Park, Illinois. Um, he served in our military for six years, and after that, he got his bachelor's in communications, and then he got a master's in criminal justice and went on to become a high school teacher. He, he has said some things that I really relate to. They resound profoundly within me. He talks about how his students challenge him every day to be his best self. Mm -hmm. And his students bring in a plethora of issues and concerns and potential solutions to things that motivate him and that constantly drive his critical thinking. Though he as a teacher pushes for critical thought. Um, there's a quote that I want to read. Um, a student said that after the Pledge of Allegiance each day, the student thought, if we end the pledge with liberty and justice for all, why are there so many people in this country without liberty and denied justice? So that's something that really resounds with me because, you know, justice Democrats, <laughs> there's a reason we have this name. Mm -hmm. um, we're fighting for justice and every platform element we're talked about is directly related to that. And this is something that Anthony thinks about every day. And he listens to the youth. A lot of youth these days talk about youth discrimination just as much as they have discrimination against seniors. You know, people just write the youth off as these visionary <laughs> um, millennials, like a swear word. And, Oh yeah, it's like, oh, you're so naive. Oh, that would never happen. We l grow up and live in the real world when it's actually those kind of ideas that we need people to champion. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, Their Anthony generations were the ones that, that uh, destroyed the climate of this world. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you know, like when, when someone gets angry at millennials for, say, not, not being able to afford college, or it's like, well, Look at the relative prices of college. It's a different story. Absolutely. And yeah, I mean the youth today, like I just, it, it, it just, just tangent. Um, mm -hmm. youth. Uh, if you actually look at uh, statistics, uh, things like teen pregnancy are actually getting better, and certainly not everywhere. And oh. um. You know, I, I think you'll you'll notice that a lot of the uh, first Justice Democrat candidates are picked specifically for places that need them the most. I mean, these guys are superheroes, and yes. um, so not everywhere, but um, kids are smart, and I, I'm I'm not going to mention it because we're live and respect privacy. But I, I had a student, just a former student 
asked me just some questions the other day that were just so intelligent and mature and um it was one of those things like the mere fact that you're asking these questions means there's not a problem <laughs> is kind of my answer and just Absolutely. i never had that sort of intelligence so i respect teachers so much <laughs> i put the um, screen up so we can't see whatever sign language you all are doing oh sorry yeah Rhea was uh talking to me i was trying to see what her message was um <laughs> Uh, were you? Did you have any, another point to make on that note, or no? I think. Uh, do you need a commercial? No, no. I was just gonna say a few more things. Okay. Um, so, Anthony Clark founded the Suburban Unity Alliance, partially on, you know, the the critical thinking pegged discussions that him he and his students have, uh, and he said that it it's it served to work to end discrimination in the community that he lives in and to help fund good causes that need some sort of charitable support. <laughs> um, and he actually led a delegation to the Women's March. Um, I didn't know Washington, that. I missed State. that. Yeah. Awesome. Um, and he, he fought hard to create um, in Oak Park to make it a welcoming village. Um, he, he, he was part of the efforts to pass a city ordinance that made it a welcoming village. Uh, and that was basically just to be more embracing of diversity and respect diversity. It reminds me of a sanctuary city, but I'm not convinced it's exactly what, what that is. Um, but I wanted to uh, read a little bit about his platform as well. Um, his platform is entitled Justice, Jobs, and Education. Um, so he says uh, in his statement, Anthony Clark is a high school teacher and founder of the Suburban Unity Alliance. He believes it's time this country lives up to its promise of liberty and justice for all. Anthony is here to work with you. In the can fight can, for can I actually justice. just, I love that, that tie back to the Pledge of Allegiance. It's like he's actually oh, yeah. in that classroom hearing it every single day. And as he's hearing it, he's like, no, let, let, let's make this happen. <laughs> I love that. Like building the Pledge of Allegiance into his platform. Love it. <laughs> Right? Because, <laughs> um, I mean, that's it's something I've thought about, too. It's like, what's... To anybody who really uh, loves the U.S., who really loves the country, or, or anyone who feels some sort of obligation to make the country of their birth, or to their... Um, nat the country of their naturalization, uh, to make that mm -hmm. country, you know, better. And if you can tie it to the documents that exist, to the pledge that exists, you're just going to be more successful because you're you're taking something that's uh, a symbol of what we stand for and saying, how can we fight for <laughs> well, what we all believe in? It, it's, it's a connecting point with uh, non-dick conservatives as well because, you know, like people that are traditionally on the conservative side of the spectrum, spoilers, next episode, it's going to get interesting. Um, but uh, people that are traditionally on the conservative side that might have certain views about states' rights versus federal that um, aren't maybe ones that I would personally agree with but actually are can hold an intelligent conversation and can defend that well, um, you know, I'm still going to respect them. A lot of people with that mentality are maybe a little bit more um i what's the word I, iconistic or like um the, the the flag as a symbol is uh, a very important thing for them and so he, having this guy that genuinely is taking that pledge to heart he is going to do well with our conservative friends and you know that that's that's we're, we're redefining democrats here you know we're saying we're just throwing that traditional like i i think our color should be purple I, I i see green on all the logos and stuff and i'm haven't spoken to any of the marketing people but um i think we should just take on the purple color mm -hmm. because red. we are specifically trying to appeal to we're, we're trying to throw away the traditional labels here um, yeah 
and so this is a guy that can do it. Sorry for interrupting again, but I just no, I totally agree. You, you so, caught my patriotism bone there, and I, I'm <laughs> I, I don't necessarily have too many chances to exercise it. Same here, you know, it, it, it exists. I I do appreciate so much, and I'm, and I'm um, happy to be living in this country, and I. I think we have a lot of really great tools to work with in our nation, and I think that's a classic example. Mm -hmm. um, Anthony, um, he, so um, Anthony Clark ends his statement by saying, "Anthony is here to work with you in the fight for criminal justice reform, public education funding, and responsible job creation." So, um, you know, here's another guy who wants living wages. He cares about infrastructure. He really cares about justice in our communities. And that's a huge issue people have been talking about. So I am extremely excited for this fellow teacher who has come from a working class background, has served our nation in the military, and deserves our respect, regardless of what you think of wars our country may wage, he deserves our respect for that. And I trust somebody who has come back from that and is still holds a critical lens to the nation that he works in and has really worked so hard to get himself a bachelor's and a master's degree and and works with our kids to make our kids think critically so we can all be a better nation. <laughs> yeah, I, I think when um, you, you said it right there, like just about everything I heard in his biography is this is someone that is spending his life bouncing around areas that he's been needed mm -hmm. and he's it just seems like this how can I help mentality and like I just have this image of him as kind of the superhero that is just like oh you need me in the military that's where I'll go you need me in the schools that's where you go I'll go you need me in the government that's where I'm going next like just <laughs> this this is an incredible candidate and I just words can and express how much I endorse Anthony Clark like yeah. this, this guy Anthony Clark if you're listening out there um, you know if you're open to suggestions for campaigns you know Anthony Clark putting the service back in public service you know yeah. I think that'd be great <laughs> yeah and I mean bo both of these candidates that we're uh, describing today are people that I mean you and I both have education and background so that that might be part of our biases but um i just i i i'm looking at them i'm like these guys are big damn heroes and yeah. i think that about most teachers i mean i've seen a few teachers that don't deserve that title but um for the most part teachers are overworked underpaid and there for just the passion and helping that next generation be better than ours and that is the thing that is exactly missing from politicians. Yeah. <laughs> and so um, if, if you were to ask me what are two jobs that are probably most important for government, I would say teachers and doctors. Mm -hmm. People that are educated and looking at health. And so... Um, We've got both in the Justice Democrats. All right, so if uh, you don't mind uh, pausing for a second, I'm going to let Anthony Clark uh, describe his own story. This one is not quite as long as the last one, but if you want to, Miguel, lean back and take a drink or whatever. Cool. And I apologize, I don't want to mess with muting the audio because I don't want to get the wrong one because it's new software, so drink quietly. Will do. Thank you so much uh, for that awesome introduction. I would just like to thank each and every candidate uh, for what you shared. You know, it's truly awe-inspiring. I thank everyone behind the scenes at PNC. And from the bottom of my heart, this is a truly humbling experience. I would like to thank each and every one of you that are watching. Uh, whether you know about BNC, whether you're learning about BNC, I truly thank you for taking the time out of your day uh, to hear us, to learn, to share and to ask questions. So, as was stated, my name is Anthony Clark and I'm a candidate for the 7th Congressional District of Illinois. I'm from a middle class family. Uh, my mother and father both 
uh, were not college educated. They came from the south side of Chicago and worked extremely hard to provide me with a better life. And they always instilled that in me. Hard work ethic, working extremely hard, building on foundations that your prior generation laid for you. Because it was important for them and for me to receive a college education because I wanted to improve upon the foundation they laid. And that's why I'm here, to continue to improve upon foundations. Uh, while my parents worked, my grandfather and grandmother helped to raise me. And I remember those days, my parents would work late and my grandmother would come pick me up from school and we would walk home and walk to her house and I would be excited because I'd be ready for her cooking. Sorry, mom, grandma was a better cook than you. Uh, but she learned a lot. Uh, but those were such great times for me being with my grandparents. And one thing that my grandfather shared with me that has stuck with me to this day is that service to others is the rent you pay for room on this earth. And I truly believe in that. And that's how I've lived my life. After graduating high school, I joined the military because again, I wanted to pay rent. I wanted to give back. And I traveled the world and met so many great people from different backgrounds and sharing different experiences, uh, socioeconomic and demographically learn how to build empathy and identify commonalities to work together and fight for each other. Uh, I continued to pay rent when I received an honorable discharge from the military and began to teach. I went to the Troops and Teachers program and I taught two years in alternative setting in the Austin community. I taught one year in Humble Park, taught one year in Hyde Park, and now I've been teaching four years at my alma mater, the high school I graduated from, Old Park River Forest High School. Again, paying rent, trying to give back. And I'm going to share a quick story with you, I hope you don't mind, uh, which has essentially led me to now. Uh, no matter how you feel about the Pledge of Allegiance and its place in our classrooms, each day my students stand up for first period and they recite the pledge. And at the end of the pledge it states liberty and justice for all. And I remember one day, not too long ago, one of my students approached me after reciting this and said, Mr. Clark, and I said yes, he said we always you know, recite the Pledge of Allegiance. And at the end, we always say liberty and justice for all. But every day that I wake up and, and I'm looking at our society and I'm listening to the TV and the radio, and I just feel like that is not true liberty and justice for all. Not all of us matter. We don't have liberty and justice. So how can we recite this with conviction? And I'll be honest with you, I didn't have an answer for him then. But that's why I'm here. That's why I've joined this movement, and I'm asking each and every one of you to join this movement, because I want to create a condition where I have the answer, where students never have to ask that question again. Students with their life ahead of them. Their lives should be bright with the possibilities of the future, not dark with despair, because they feel like they don't belong in that liberty and justice for all. So again, so many of us, my motto is fights are not mutually exclusive. I started a nonprofit and I give back to the community because I believe in that all. I'm fighting for each and every one of you and I'm asking for each and every one of you to fight for yourselves and to fight with us to make a difference. Because right now when we're in the streets and when we're fighting back and we hear people say women's rights are human rights, they don't believe that they're that all, but they're still paying rent. When we hear people say, si se quede, let them in, they don't believe that they're that all, but they're still paying rent. They're still trying to get back and fight. When we say marriage equality for all, they don't believe right now that they belong in that liberty and justice for all. Black lives matter. They don't believe that it's liberty and justice for all. So why I've joined Brand New Congress is because I've realized it's not enough just to pay rent because rent alone does not create ownership. We have to do more. So I'm joining Brand New Congress and I'm part of this movement because now it's time to rent to all. I'm going to give back to create ownership for each and every one of you. We're in the state of Illinois right now without a budget. We need education reform. We need criminal justice reform. We need to invest in our underserved communities. We need to address our tax issues. We need to address the equity issues in regards to our, how we fund our educational system, the violence. In the, what can we do? We're speaking up, we're yelling, but yet that top 1% that currently has ownership, those special interest groups, they're not listening to us. So it's enough of us yelling, it's time for us to do. And we're continuing to do what we have been doing, but instead of just paying rent, it's rent to own. So at the end of the day, when my students are standing up and they're reciting that pledge and they end it with liberty and justice for all, we can truly say that with conviction because we truly mean it. 
Again, my name is Anthony Clark. Fights are not mutually exclusive. It's about post-partisan people over politics. I truly believe that. And I'm your candidate for 7th Congressional District of Illinois. I believe in you, all of you. And I'm asking all of you to believe in me. Thank you. All right. So if that is not a real, genuine human being, none of this stuffy lawyer parsing of words, and I, I, I can't tell you how excited I am about just <laughs> Michael, Anthony, you guys are amazing. Love you both. I will be doing whatever I can to help out. And I, if you're listening and if you've liked what you've seen, do the same. Go to their web pages. You'll find all the links, if not quite yet, um, within the next couple days. Justice Democrats uh, podcast.wordpress.com. Justice Democrats, brand new Congress. Um, I'm providing links in uh, Facebook and all Twitter. All that stuff will be on our podcast website, um, so you can get in touch with them. And it, oh, I'm just I'm excited, like real human beings. <laughs> yeah, real people. Yeah, I oh I mean just it, it's so it's a breath of fresh air, you know, like after. When, you know, just just uh, right now on Facebook, you know how they do their like memory things, like this day a year ago or seven years ago or whatever. Like it's bringing back the election, and I don't want that. You know, it's like this day, you know, a year ago, you first found out about how much uh, Hillary Clinton had stacked the deck with super delegates, and <laughs> <laughs> this day down in brazil you know like it's like breaking my heart every day having to relive some of the worst things of like soul crushing experiences ever and uh, this is yeah, the opposite weird. of that though like this is this is just I've, I've got so much hope and i mean anthony is such a great storyteller he's just watch his eyes i mean there there there's just pure burning passion and like this is someone that's just sees a job done and he knows he's the right guy to do it and oh, I'm, I'm I am thrilled and I, I I am going to we've still got a few technical issues here that we're working through but I am going to reach out to all of these candidates and hopefully get um, interviews with some um, I would love to chat with them but um up until that point we'll share uh videos and articles and stuff like that when we find them so um yeah so we have uh, i'm glad i broke this up that <laughs> we would have either had to rush through that or had another incredibly long episode so um <laughs> in the next episode we are going to look at a few ladies that will be representing us um and again some more incredible candidates i'm excited and if you want some diversity and see just how diverse we are going to get you're going to watch me on air endorse a republican <laughs> yeah that's it's good you got scared when you heard cory bush's name <laughs> yeah yeah For, and i'm I'm actually pretty excited to do so. Like and like I said, we need to abandon traditional terms of left, right, conservative, progressive. All of those have been muddled up and confused with new speak and we need to look at people for who they actually are, what their proven history is, what they're actually saying, what they're actually doing, and we need to <laughs> Not look at both sides of the aisle, but abandon the aisle. <laughs> and so, yeah, I'm I'm going to actually endorse a Republican. And I'm going to mean it. And it's going to be great. So, you got that to look forward to. And uh, another thing, I'm not going to um, make Miguel commit to anything uh, here on the air here. But um, another thing I recently ran into... 
is something called the Pro Truth Pledge. And you can look Ooh. it up at Pro protruthpledge.org I'm not committing Miguel to this until he's had his chance to do some research on it um, but what this is is an attempt to combat this idea that we live in a pro uh, post-truth world um, the, right. I- the idea that all politicians are lying all the time and that's the end of the conversation um, there are actual academics who have been working on this issue to try to find some ways of dealing with this, and they've created a pro-truth pledge, which is accountability for people that are not telling the truth. Um, go, go to the website, read kind of the methodology of how they do it, but basically you sign your name up to the list, mm-hmm. and it works with a carrot-and-stick mentality. So if you are someone that is consistently telling the truth, not sharing websites that are known to be fraudulent and misleading, um, if you make an error, you're the sort of person that goes back and corrects the error. You're the sort of person that appreciates um, fixing mistakes rather than uh, perpetuating them, then basically your name kind of gets known as a truthful person and there they keep lists of say podcasts and journalists and things like that that have signed this pledge and if you're looking through that list and you see someone that's basically sworn an oath to tell truth as often as possible and said that you're willing to if you make a mistake, uh, redact it and fix it. Well, I want to go to those websites. I want to go to w- listen to those podcasts because I can trust them more. So there's the carrot. The stick is if you are knowingly sharing false information, there's a system of uh, accountability where other people that have signed this pledge will first privately contact you and say, Hey, listen, uh, have you checked the date on that article? Um, the the first several steps are all completely private, all assuming innocent until proven guilty. Um, it will be um, uh, using um, scientific consensus. So when they're not calling you on petty things like um, mom makes better brownies than grandma, where before I said grandma made better brownies and <laughs> not... not it's not things like that, um, and it's mostly for people in public forums, um, not private situations. But if you're in a public forum and you are deliberately saying, and, and it's not mistakes too, if you accidentally share something, um, so you know this this will give you a chance to fix your knowledge of it. And it's not necessarily for things that there might not be a consensus of. Those aren't necessarily going to be fought over with a fine grain granularity um but for for big things with something that is flat out false if you continue to perpetuate this and if you don't fix this then that gets shared and you kind of have a series of warnings and eventually like you become known as a person that is deliberately uh passing on false information and that has been exposed to the correct information and you have chances to rebut it. You have chances to say, hey, no, hey, hey, there's things that you didn't know. Um, and eventually, you know, that could be uh, pretty reputation destroying. And that's a good thing, right? <laughs> you know, if someone's not telling the truth, they deserve to have their reputation destroyed. So um, I do know of one politician that has signed this. Um, I've sent him an email. I don't know if he is... Um, what his stance on Justice Democrats are. I will probably endorse him either way, but I'm going to um, wait to hear back from him before I uh, divulge that further. But I know of one politician that's already s- signed the pro-truth pledge. Instantly, that I feel better about him. He There's someone that's saying, I want you to hold me accountable. And so I will be signing this pledge. I will let Miguel uh, reach that decision on his own merit. Um, I have also put in my candidate descriptions 
for every single candidate a field for whether or not they have signed this pledge. And right now, the nice. this is just beginning. It's only a couple months old. Um, so at this moment, I don't think any of them have really had the chance to hear about it. But I encourage everyone to contact their leaders, contact candidates that they like, and request that they sign this pledge. It, um, it shouldn't do anything more than hold them accountable, um, which should be a good thing if they're an honest person. And, um, you know, it's not like... It's not like if you make one mistake, you know, you're suddenly going to have your name on a billboard. Um, it, it's more modest than that. It's, but it, it's, it's, I think, uh, a nice check and balance here. And so um, I will be signing that for myself. And so if I make mistakes, if I say things that you know I don't actually believe, for example... Just since I, I'm, we're talking about truth here. Roger Ailes just died, and I posted on Twitter that I don't celebrate the death of any human being, but I do take comfort knowing that people are no longer a threat. Uh -huh. I might have been stretching a little. <laughs> um, I don't think that's something that has the granularity that would have been enforced with something like that but um mm -hmm. if um if you catch me in a lie i i want to fix that i'm not going to be deliberately and we are about justice we are about doing things different and politics have been so corrupt and so i'm gonna put my money where my mouth is and so i am going to be signing this um Feel free to leave a comment or send me a private message if you catch something that you feel is an incorrect statement I make. And beyond that, I am going to be sending um, messages to our Justice Democrats candidates requesting that they sign this as well. I want mm -hmm. this new generation of Democrats and politicians in general to be held accountable, and I think this is a great way of doing it. And so... Whether they not do it or not, I will display that on our webpage, and you can take that for what it is. Mm -hmm. So, just trying to have as many checks and balances as we can here. So I like that as a check. Yeah, and so yeah, I, I'm 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 excited about it. it. I noticed when I was listening to it on a podcast, like when I first heard it, there was a little bit of a like, ooh, I'm a little scared by that because, you know, I'm a storyteller and I like my embellishments, you know. Um, I can't imagine Mark Twain ever signing something like this. Uh, <laughs> but when you actually think about it, it shouldn't affect your life at all if you're doing the right things. And, that's true. You know, like, what's the worst that's going to come from it? Someone's going to tell you, you know, like, you've got wrong knowledge, in which case you can update your knowledge, give a man culpa, and every, you know, like, so, yeah, I, I, I've thought about, like, it, the fact that I was actually kind of had an initial worried twinge to it, you know, like, I think is reason why it's necessary, because I think we just have so many lies and so much deceit that's normalized in our culture that, um, It'll be a good exercise. I, I've, I've actually, since thinking about this, I've actually gone through on Facebook and Twitter and removed several uh, feeds that I knew weren't accurate, but I just never got around to deleting. So just nice. just this idea, I'm like, I just I don't want to expose to that. They're not giving me good information. So I think it's a good idea. Well, it's set up well. I like it. All right, so, um, yeah, why, why don't you uh, look through it, uh, both Miguel and our viewers, and if you take the pledge, let us know. Comment in the, uh, I'm imagining there's a below. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure if that's true on all platforms, but usually there's a below that you can comment on. Uh, let us know. And uh, check out the pages of Anthony and Michael. Check out the pages of the people we haven't spoken about yet, and... Give them whatever support you can. I'm, I'm excited here. I'm just, oh, I'm thrilled. <laughs> we're 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 making a difference. So as 
Trump is in Saudi Arabia securing arms deals with one of the biggest nations of human rights violations. Human rights violations. We're actually working against that, and yep. yeah, I and we're we're going to see a difference. And it, some of these candidates aren't going to succeed, but I think many are, and mm-hmm. the ones we've announced so far have. Have already raised tens of thousands of dollars too. I haven't even got into that. Like they're actually having successful financial contributions. So like we're we're doing this. This is this is working here. So tides are turning. Yep. So even if they're single moms. (laughs) All right. So I unfortunately this week don't have any uh, pithy thing to video to take us out on or anything, but. um, We'll see you next time and just rock on.